you know, I've gone through a lot in my life, uh, and the struggles continue every day. But what brought me, in my opinion, to the Golden Gate Bridge on September 25th, 2000, it wasn't because of a death in the family. It wasn't because of a breakup with my most recent girlfriend, both of which had just happened. People say, you know, the person died by suicide because uh, they, their girlfriend broke up with them, because they lost their job, because they lost a family member. That's not, that's not how it works. I was at the Golden Gate Bridge in so much mental, emotional, and physical pain because of my brain disease bipolar disorder. I could see no other option. I never wanted to die. I believed I had to. I believed there wasn't a shadow of doubt in my mind that I had no other course to take. So I went to that bridge. My father thought I was at school at City College. After dropping me off there that morning, after trying to reach me and saying, Kevin, why don't you come to work with me today? Come to the movies, we'll go to the beach. And I lied to my dad because I was so content with the fact that I had to die because of the voices in my head and the pain I was experiencing. That's the common denominator of suicidal people, an epic amount of pain that you can't describe to anyone and you think no one will understand and you think you're alone. I wasn't alone. I was surrounded by a sea of people, but I thought I was an island. And I thought nobody else understood this. Nobody under empathized with it. I was brought to that bridge because of my brain. And I remember going over that rail. I remember having an instant regret. 36 people have survived that fall. Of the well over 2,000 that have died, that's a 2% survival rate. Less than five have regained full mobility. I'm one of those five. The climate of our nation, as it, as it relates to brain, brain health and, and mental and behavioral health, um, is at a, uh, is that a, a, a precipice of change? More people than ever before are reporting on suicide, suicide prevention matters and mental health in America. In that same token, more people are inaccurately reporting it. So that it's a time now when state by state has to, has to step it up for that training to occur and hell, to mandate it, to mandate that change. Even for the people who say, I don't want to do that. I know suicide prevention. I know how to take care of someone who's mentally unstable. No, you don't. Because you haven't learned the tools, tips, and programs that actually are proven to save lives, to lower costs, and to help people heal. Because we're never going to change a generation until the generations that are coming up know what to look for and how to get that person to safety before the suicide attempt occurs before the mental breakdown happens and when we get that training in place on a national basis and it's, and it's mandatory, you will see someone be able to represent for a loved one and know that they've done the right thing no matter the outcome. I'm grateful to be anywhere, anytime. I mean that. still going through it. That's okay. Because I get to be here. And I'll deal with that for the rest of my life. Because it's a disease that's chronic. And there are no cures. Until and when that happens, I work tirelessly to stay alive. I have chronic suicidal thoughts. They're not going to kill me though. They'll never kill me. I have too much of a support network for them to kill me. <laughs>